Well, I think that probably the difference between um, my critique uh, and maybe the critique of others who criticize the West uh, is that uh, I don't really differentiate between colonization and imperialism and racism and white supremacy, feudalism, neo-capitalism, and so on. I don't differentiate these things from each other, and I don't differentiate these things from the culture and the character of the West itself. All of these things are manifestations of Western character. That's what drives these policies and these practices and these ideas. They're all just versions of each other. For instance, the same colonizer mentality uh, is actually applied across every arena in the West. The mentality of exploitation of others' resources and the dehumanization and subjugation of those whose resources they are while feeling completely entitled. You see this across every sector in the West. And it doesn't matter if you're talking about uh, minerals or precious metals or gems or crops or what have you, or if you're talking about labor, or if you're talking about talent and creativity. These are, these are all natural resources. And it doesn't matter if you're talking about these resources being in another country or being in your own country. The point is they're not your resources and you exploit and pillage and profit from them. And you marginalize and subordinate the actual owners of the resources. So, I mean, look at America. Uh, whatever cultural, unique cultural contribution that's come from America, it's come from the poor, from the underclass, from African Americans, from poor whites, from immigrants, and so on. From gospel music to blues music to R&B uh, to jazz, rap, and hip-hop, and so on. And then on the other side of the coin, uh, bluegrass, country music, rockabilly, rock and roll, and so on. All of these things came from the poor, from the working class. And from uh, John Steinbeck to James Baldwin, your best writers all emerged from poverty and deprivation. Historically, the same goes for most of your acclaimed athletes, your entertainers, and your performers. And then your style and fashion and slang and everything. Creativity has always come from the poor. The rich mine the resources of their talent the same way that they would uh, uh, mine uh, copper or lithium or gold and then profit from it, enrich themselves and claim it and act like it's part of their own greatness. You claim these talents and creativity as American, but the people themselves whose talent and creativity it was uh, were all people from uh, uh, a people whom America abused and treated like nothing. They came from people who uh, your society... And your system treats as if they have nothing to contribute. Yet their contributions are the only things that gave you any kind of culture at all. They don't represent America. They overcame what America did to them. And even still, more often than not, they died penniless. This is a colonizer mindset. You know, record producers, agents, lawyers, publishers, what have you. These groups of talentless leeches who feel entitled to get rich... Uh, off of the creative resources of others. They're exactly the same as colonizers who feel entitled to get rich off of the raw mi uh, minerals and the natural resources in, say, Africa or Asia, the Middle East, Latin America, and so on. It's the same mindset. You yourself offer nothing. You contribute nothing. You create nothing. You just exploit and use and devour. It's parasitic. It's the feudal system just manifesting in various ways. And this runs throughout the whole so-called civilization. You can even see it manifesting on an individual basis. I mean, to one degree or another, individuals of a society or of a civilization are just fractals of that society, of that civilization, which is why you find so many Westerners who are mediocre, materialistic, greedy, entitled narcissists. And they even approach interpersonal relationships with a colonizer, feudalistic, self-supremacist mentality. Main character syndrome, they call it. This may be where your whole so-called crisis of masculinity comes from, to be honest. Because none of these attributes of your so-called civilization are masculine traits. But that's another topic for another day. The point is, the same thing drives all of it. Drives colonization, drives racism, drives white supremacy, drives feudalism, drives neoliberal capitalism, drives neocon warmongering, drives union busting, drives exploitation of artists, on and on and on. It's the fundamental character flaw of the West. And they built their whole so-called civilization on the foundation of that flaw. It's the misassignment of value, or in a word, materialism. The idea that having and controlling resources is, in and of itself, success and superiority. And by extension, having and controlling other people's resources is admirable, 
and is to be justified by whatever rationale is most effective. You know, I said narcissism for a reason, because uh, this is different from egomania. Someone can have a big ego, but not be a narcissist. A narcissist knows deep down that they're not special. And their self-obsession and their vanity uh, is just a camouflage for actually feeling a low self-worth. They're mostly mediocrities. And what's a mediocrity? It's a person who's lacking the natural resource of creativity and talent. So you could say that they are resource narcissists because they are naturally resource poor. They want to be resource rich, meaning that they want the resources of those who actually have them. Again, whether this means raw minerals, labor, talent, ideas, what have you. They want what they don't naturally have. And they want to be perceived as having that more than anyone else. So again, because in reality, they, don't, uh, they want what they don't deserve. Uh, they have to project upon the resource rich that they are undeserving. So stealing from them is justified because it just means that you're righting the cosmic wrong of them ever having had the resources in the first place because obviously everything should just belong to me. We're essentially oppressed because our oppressors uh, are mediocrities and they can only feel special uh, by subjugating those who are special. Wallahi, the story of the West and the Global South is basically the story of Cain and Abel writ large.